course, I want to start this review in the style of Shawn Michaels by appearing from a drawer and saying, you were expecting someone else? But, alas, and I did check, I can't fit into any of my drawers, so it's just going to be me talking. And I'm going to be talking about Monday Night Raw for the 30th of March. And I thought this was a fairly lackluster show. I didn't really enjoy this. It's weird, I was expecting Thursday Sma Friday Smackdown to be, uh, to be quite a boring show. Uh, as the last few Smackdowns have been, but I enjoyed the wrestling on that. I thought it was good. This week, I thought the last Raw before WrestleMania, the last live thing before WrestleMania, is going to be a big spectacle. Lots of exciting twists and turns are going to happen, etc., etc. And I don't feel I really got that. I thought it was quite a boring show. I suppose it's because I don't like the McMahons. I suppose if you like the McMahons, then this was a good show. Um... And I know a lot of people do like the McMahons. Personally, I don't like Vince McMahon inside or outside of wrestling. I think he's a disruptive influence inside and just plain evil outside. So I guess that's why I didn't... No, I didn't like it for a lot of reasons. I guess that's why I don't like it and some people will like it. Yeah. Anyway, we started off with an 18 Diva tag team match split along heel face lines. Uh, I don't know if all the heels were heels. I don't know if all the faces were faces. I'm sure they weren't, um, but I didn't check. And, um, yeah, I was worried that they wouldn't be able to compress this match into the three-minute time slot they usually give the Divas. But they managed it. Um, only five of the Divas worked during this match, and some surprising people worked. Tiffany worked from UCW and uh, Jillian Hall. If you suppose it isn't that surprising. I just think she's rubbish, but... Um, yeah, this was, you know, this was rubbish. This was, this was not a good match at all. It ended as every Divas match for the last month has ended um, with a roll-up. Tiffany gets the victory for the face team as though she has some chance of being this WrestleMania and uh, she rolls up Katie Lee for the win. Um, then Santino comes out and says that uh, they're prejudiced basically and that he's, a <laughs> he's asked Jack Tunney if he can be in the match and find out Jack Tunney did in fact die, but um, that he is a campaigner for equal rights and he will make it into Miss WrestleMania. And then he says he's going to win the swimsuit competition, at which point Jerry the King Lawler says, this will be good. I was like, Jerry, you do know what's about to happen here. And... Um, Towards the end of this promo, he stopped sounding Italian, stereotypical Italian, and started sounding like Dr. Evil. Particularly when he was talking about the mankini, he sounded exactly like Dr. Evil. Um, yeah, this was pretty funny. Santino's funny. Then all the divas beat him up and throw him out of the ring. I hope he is in the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal. I feel that that would suit his character quite well. But, um, yeah. At least, at least Michael Cole and uh, Jerry the King Lawler have stopped that bit where Michael Cole goes, yeah, I know you were on WWE.com looking at Divas all day, and Jerry the King Lawler's like, yeah, I fucking loved it, I was wanking all day, it was great. At least they've stopped that bit, which was just the worst part of every show. Um, next up, we had Jerry the King Lawler himself fighting Chris Jericho. Um, this was okay, this was kind of like, I don't know, Jerry the King Lawler can still move in the ring, but his arsenal was always limited, and it seems when Jericho's fighting these guys, he has to limit his own wrestling style, so that, I don't know, so people don't support him when he's doing springboard drop kicks and the other guy's just doing punches. Uh, I don't think Jerry the King Lawler did anything other than a punch in this match. But, he, like I said, he moved alright. It was kind of like, a, half the match was kind of like Chris Jericho beating down Jerry the King Lawler, it, like he did Ric Flair, just inside the ring. Like, he wasn't using any wrestling moves. It was just punches and elbows and kicks, etc., etc. Um, yeah, and Jerry the King Lawler, like I said, only did punches. But it wasn't that bad. Um, credit to Jericho for carrying this entire feud by himself, basically. He's been doing this for a month and a half. No one else could do this. He's done this for a month and a half. Uh, he's carried a feud against opponents that are basically shadows like he was just criticizing mickey rourke who's never there he was criticizing the legends who only showed up once you know and they, they don't show up anymore they didn't they didn't sabotage him at the end of this match or anything um anyway jericho wins with the walls of jericho 
uh, we finally found someone who is prepared to tap out to the laws of Jericho. And I actually thought this was a mistake. I know I moan quite regularly about people should tap out to the laws of Jericho, but I thought Jerry the King Lawler, who was fueled by hatred, uh, wouldn't tap out. I don't think that made, made sense, but at least at least mm. someone tapped out. Then we had a little bit with John Cena and Edge. Edge says, we need to team together to bring down the big show. John Cena does his usual sort of pretending he's going to do it bit where he goes, that makes sense. Wow, I should do that. And then just did his face thing where he goes, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be the champion, etc., etc. Then we had DiBiase and Rhodes. Leon uh, deliver one of their incredible... I don't even know what they said, to be honest. It was one minute, and it's just like, you know, uh, bullied kids at school talking, basically. Uh, yeah, they were talking about Randy Orton, I presume. Couldn't have been about their own careers. Um, then it was Mysterio versus JBL in a match. Giving away a match for WrestleMania. Didn't quite see the point. JBL says it was to gain a psychological advantage. and I was like... That doesn't really even make sense. Um, but yeah, it was basically just giving away a match that was on the pay-per-view. And I think the match on the pay-per-view is going to go something like this one does. Basically, uh, JBL dominates throughout, does all his, you know, incredibly athletic maneuvers. The fall-away slam, the repeated elbow drops, the shoulder block. You know, just utterly boring crap. Ray... Goes for a 619 three times, hits on the third time, hits the frog splash and gets the pin. Uh, and JBL's plan backfires. And now they're suggesting the thing, the historic thing JBL is planning is just to beat Rey Mysterio comprehensively. That's That wouldn't be a story. I hope they've got something much bigger lined up for this little sort of semi angle they've got going here. Um, but yeah, Rey Mysterio wins. What, what was the point in that? Um, then we had John Cena versus The Big Show, and it's still quite early in the show for this match to be coming out, which was basically billed as the main event. Um, this was okay. This, <laughs> I, I, would, I would expect myself to slate this match, but this was actually alright. The Big Show does look much better in the ring. I don't know, is it just everyone else selling his offense? He does look more mobile and stuff. He did a baseball slide, which I was quite impressed at. And basically, the, the, all these matches are getting over the Big Show. The Big Show is the big threat. No one can stop the Big Show. That's what we're supposed to believe. After all those years of the Big Show jobbing to everyone, no one can now stop him because he is fueled by Vicky Guerrero's love. And, um, yeah, I was glad that John Cena took the pinfall here. Uh, basically, because Edge had to take, well, the knockout punch. Uh, I'm sick of watching Edge have to job to people and Cena not to get them over, so... I was glad that Cena did uh, get pinned here. Basically, Big Show dominates the entire match. Um, and then wins with a choke slam, Queen pin after a choke slam. I know I'd expect John Cena to kick out there, but it was a Queen pin after a choke slam. So yeah, that, that was okay. I, I quite like the ending there. Uh, where is Vicky Guerrero? Like, she was shown backstage, but she hasn't been at the last two shows. Now, for someone who gets as much heat as she does, I would have her on every show, especially with the way she she is the crux of this entire angle. She is what it's based on. It's really, the whole thing is a fight between Big Show and Edge over Vicky Guerrero, and Cena's involved because he's stirring the pot, basically. That is the angle. Uh, I don't see why Vicky Guerrero isn't on the shows recently, but, um, yeah, I didn't really get that. Anyway, yeah. Highlights of the match, not really much to talk about, but it was okay in all. Big Show doing the baseball slide, that was, that was the highlight. Um.